Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf and welcome to Foundation Friday. In this week's Foundation Friday, we are going for an affordable foundation that's actually got a little bit of hype at the moment. This is relatively new in the UK. This hasn't been released yet in the US, but you do have this brand in the US, so it probably will be released very, very soon if you've not got it already by the time this video airs. Anyway, this is the Lottie London Velvet Skin Tint Foundation. And um, I'm actually quite excited to get some of this on my skin after the claims that I've actually heard. So let's do a little bit of bump on this product. Before I do, please make sure you have liked, you have considered subscribing if you haven't subscribed already and you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads. I upload on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 8 p.m. London time and I'm also on Instagram if you want to check me out on there. It's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. So this is the Lottie London Velvet Skin Tint Foundation. It's £9.95 in the UK and you get 50 mils worth of product. Yes, you heard me right, 50 mils worth of product. So you get a lot for your money. The only other product that I know gives 50 mils in a foundation is the Dior Face and Body, which also has a bottle very, very similar to this. So hopefully this will be very similar because if you are a regular to my channel, you will know I absolutely love the Dior Face and Body Foundation. It's so lightweight you can't feel it on the skin and it gives really natural beautiful coverage it's just absolutely phenomenal so fingers crossed for great results with this foundation now this only comes in eight shades which you would think was okay with this being a sheer too light coverage foundation this would blend into your natural skin tone however I would like Lottie London to introduce a couple more shades because the shade range at the moment is very light to medium skin tone heavy. There are very few deep shades for those people of colour. So just to even it out a little bit, I think they should release a couple more shades in the deeper category. This gives a natural matte finish with a soft focus effect. So this should airbrush the skin a little bit a very little bit, you should be able to have that soft focus, really airbrushed finish on the surface of the skin. This is lightweight, it gives sheer buildable coverage, don't be expecting miracles, this will not give medium coverage regardless of how much you apply. This is sheer to light coverage. If you're wanting anything more than that, you really shouldn't be trying out this foundation. It will even out skin tone. It's infused with hyaluronic acid and also coconut extract to hydrate and smooth. Now, the coconut extract is going to be a difficult ingredient for some people to handle. So if you do have very blemish prone, very acne prone skin, then the coconut extract may hinder this slightly for you as coconut on the face can be a little comedogenic. This is very low down on the inky list, but it's worth bearing in mind if you are blemish prone and acne prone. This says it's going to be quite long wearing. We will test that out today. It's fragrance and essential oil free. It does contain a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, but again, this is extremely low down on the inky list, so shouldn't cause you any major problems unless you are seriously sensitive to isopropyl alcohol. This is cruelty free and it's vegan. Let's get some on my skin. Okay, so as per usual, I already have all of my skincare on my face and I've already given that plenty of time to sink in before I'm applying the foundation. As per usual, I am going to be applying half of my face with a brush and half of my face with a sponge to see which one applies better. This is going to be a first impressions review because although I've swatched this on the back of my hand, you know, you can't tell how this is gonna wear on a swatch on the back of your hands. So I haven't actually tried this on my face. I've been really eager to try it out because if this is a good one, this is such good value for money. I really want to like this really want to like this. So the shade that I've gone for is P015, which is fair with peach undertones. I believe that's the shade that I went for. So I've shaken it up, apply some to the back of my hand. Just apply it a little bit for now. As you can see, it is quite liquidy. It is falling down the back of my hand. So I'm gonna use my Brush Junkie Foundation Buffing Brush, which I absolutely love. 
and apply it to this side of my face. Okay, so I can already tell at the moment that this is actually sinking into the skin really, really quickly. Very, very beautiful consistency, very easy to blend. It's definitely mattified it, but not overly matte, it's not a flat matte. And it's not masses of coverage. Just like I said in the bump, not masses of coverage. This is a sheer coverage, but we're gonna see if it's buildable as well. So that will be quite interesting to see. And it is a good color match for me. So if you are my shade twin, obviously at this moment in time, I don't know if this is going to oxidize, but if you are my shade twin, then on first application, this is pretty decent. So P015 for fair skin. This is very, very skin-like in the finish. So as you can see on this side, it's just slightly more mattified than on this side where I only have my skincare on my face. Okay, so absolutely loving the coverage on this side. I'm gonna move on to using a blending sponge. So let's grab a damp blending sponge. Now the good thing about applying it with a blending sponge is one, you get less coverage. So if you're into that specific look, then you're gonna get less coverage using a blending sponge. But also because it's a damp sponge, it takes a little longer to dry down. So you just have a little bit extra time to blend it out. Not that it was a problem this dried down really quickly because it really wasn't. I had plenty of time to even this out and blend it all together. So it wasn't an issue the amount of time it took, but um, if you do like to have that little bit extra time, then a blending sponge is the way to go. So I've just had to apply a little bit more onto the back of my hand because the sponge, even though it's damp, has really soaked this foundation up. This is lovely. This is really, really lovely. Let's see if it can be built up. I'm gonna take my brush on this side and just go over my acne, well, post-acne pigmentation on my cheek area. And yes, that's built up beautifully. So let's see if it's buildable with a sponge on this side. It's a very smooth application. Yes, it's still buildable. Just gonna apply a tiny bit extra to my chin. It feels completely weightless, this foundation. I just don't feel like I have anything on my skin. Anyway, I'm gonna go and apply the rest of my products and I'll be right back. Okay, so that is the finished look. I hope you like it. I've kept it very natural because as per normal Foundation Fridays, I like to keep things more natural so that the foundation is the star of the show rather than all the products that are piled on top of it so that we can still see the foundation and the skin. Anyway, there are a couple of things that I want to update you on that I've noticed since I finished the application process. So when I went to have a look at this in natural lighting, I realized that on the side that I applied with a brush, there were some brush strokes within the foundation that I hadn't noticed during application. It was only when I went in natural lighting that I actually noticed this. Obviously, you will be applying your foundation in better lighting than I have. It may seem like I've got really good lighting in this room, but I actually don't unless I'm in front of my lit up mirror. So um, you'll probably have better lighting than I do whilst I'm actually filming. So um, I noticed that I got some brush strokes, which I then had to just pad over with a damp blending sponge. So my preferred method of application, if I'm not in great lighting, would be with a blending sponge. You can apply this with a brush. If you're in great lighting, you'll notice the brush strokes and you'll be able to get rid of those immediately. Or you can apply this with a brush and then just quickly go over it and smooth it over with a blending sponge. The other thing was all my products blended out beautifully on the top of this foundation. However, when I was leaning on my hand to do my brows, um, which I do all the time, this foundation did lift underneath it. So it may be because 
the foundation wasn't completely dry down, but I would be surprised if it was for that reason because the foundation really did dry quite quickly on my skin. So this definitely isn't transfer proof. I doubt it will be transfer resistant either, but we'll see as the day goes on because there is a football match that I want to watch later. Sheffield United are on the TV. Obviously I can't go and see them at the moment. I am an avid Sheffield United fan. And when I'm watching the football matches, I do tend to touch my face a little more than usual. I'm not usually a face toucher, but during football matches, I'm like, <gasps> you know, those sorts of things. So it will be a good test for this foundation to see if it continuously lifts throughout the day as I touch my face. Because if you are a face toucher and that is the case, then this foundation will look extremely patchy by the end of the day. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Let's just have a look at this in natural lighting so you can see up close and personal. Okay, so as you can see, this has not sank into my smile lines, it hasn't sank into my pores, it hasn't made me have a little bit of a polka dot nose. It's very smooth, it's very skin-like, it's very flattering on my skin. You can definitely still see my skin through it. You can still see some of my imperfections through it, which I haven't doubled up the foundation to build up the coverage on those areas. I really like the fact that you can still see my skin through this, but this isn't going to be for everybody. Like I said right at the beginning of this video, this is a sheer to light coverage foundation. You're not really going to get any more out of it. So if you're wanting a medium coverage, this is not going to be the foundation for you. But all in all, it looks really, really flattering on my skin and I am very, very happy with the outcome. I am going to get on with the rest of my day. I will check in with you a little bit later on to show you how this foundation has has got on. It's actually quite late in the day here so it's going to be very late at night by the time I'm actually checking in with you so um, see you all in a bit. Welcome back to the check-in. It's now been just over nine hours since I first applied the foundation to my face. Let me just take these glasses off just in case I blind anybody with the reflection. The foundation's done quite well considering the workout that it's had. So I've filmed a lot of videos today. I've been in this room under the lights, which can get very, very hot after a certain amount of time. So this foundation has had quite a bit to deal with, as well as me constantly touching my face during the football match, which we won 3-0, by the way. It was a very impressive performance. Anyway, let me show you this in natural lighting after nine hours of work. So after nine hours, it has gone a little bit patchy in places, but not as patchy as I thought it would have done with me constantly touching my face, which, you know, I usually recommend that people don't do, but, you know, I've been doing it today. So, um... There's none left on the end of my nose. There's also none left on the tip of my chin, but because this is a sheer to light coverage, you can't really notice that much. So my skin is a lot shinier than it was before. And after around about three hours, especially with me being in the heat underneath the lights, it sort of lost its soft focus matte look. And certain areas looked a little bit suspect and a bit too shiny and a little cakey, even though this is a really sheer coverage foundation. Now, I didn't actually blot any of those areas. I didn't retouch any of those areas. And when I cooled off and went into a room that was slightly cooler, those areas just went back to normal without any effort whatsoever. So I was really, really pleased about that. Now, to me, even in natural lighting, this foundation still looks fine. It's not my favorite foundation, but it's really, really nice. I prefer the Kosas and also the Dior Backstage Face and Body, but putting things into perspective, those foundations are three times more than this foundation. So for me, this foundation has done really, really well. It's been very, very comfortable to wear. It hasn't felt like I've had a lot of foundation, if any foundation on my face. It hasn't gone tight. It just feels really, really nice, but it hasn't been as long wearing as I would have hoped. Had this not said that it was a long wearing foundation, which it does say in the literature, uh, I wouldn't have been bothered whatsoever because sheer to light coverage foundations generally don't last a long period of time. It's to be expected. So I sort of wish they hadn't put that in the bump. 
but they did. Anyway, I don't feel at this moment in time that this is a long wearing foundation. I am gonna try this foundation again without any moisturizer on underneath it. I think it's really important that I do that because my skin type is changing at the moment. I did do a video the other day saying that skin types change all the time and mine is changing at the moment. So I've gone from a seriously dry skin to all of a sudden more of a dry combination skin and I'm hoping that it'll verge more into the normal skin type type as time progresses. So I'm still using those really emollient creams underneath my foundations, which might not be necessary for me anymore. It might be slightly too heavy. So if I try it without a moisturizer or a different moisturizer that's a little less heavy, this foundation may look nicer and last longer on my skin. So I am gonna do that and I will let you know how I get on in a future faves and fails video. Because if I can make this foundation last longer and look nicer for longer, then jobs are good and because this is a truly affordable foundation and you get a lot for your money. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know what you thought about the foundation in the comment section below. If you've tried this already and you liked it or you didn't like it, do share your experience with the rest of the Wolf Pack because your experience is invaluable. Hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.